hello everybody and welcome back to my youtube channel i know it's been a while to be honest um life got busy what can we say all right moving on <laughs> so today we'll be talking about club two so congratulations by the way on passing your club one so of course the next question you have is what is club two how do i do club two i'm sure you've done some of your research definitely but um, I just say, let me give you some information as well, just on my part as somebody who has done and passed the PLAB2 examination, okay? All right, so PLAB2 exam is actually an OSCE exam, just like every OSCE that you know. The only thing I would say is, and I think this is really important for everybody, is that PLAB2 is not like every other OSCE that you've done. You have to understand that PLAB2 actually assesses you as a doctor who has at least one year medical experience. So this is not going to be an OSCE where all you need to demonstrate is, okay, I can take a history or, oh, and I know the diagnosis. No, it's beyond that. They want to see how do you interact with patients? How do you communicate with patients? So this exam tests your definitely, and don't let anybody lie to you to say, oh, all you need to do is just learn how to talk, you know, all the IPS stuff. No, that's not going to work. I can tell you for sure. Okay. <laughs> What you need to do is you need to have a clinical knowledge and that should go without saying, to be honest. And that is why I think they want you. PLAB2 is an exam that you cannot take unless you've passed PLAB1. So meaning that you have to have the clinical knowledge and then you need to now know how to communicate that knowledge that you have. Doctor, how are you able to communicate that? How are you able to demonstrate that? How do you interact with patients on a day-by-day -day basis, okay? So for PLAB2, two things really that are very important is your communication skills, very, very important. Definitely, that's what the exam really is about. And also, in addition to that, very good clinical knowledge meaning that you should know your diagnosis and you should know the management for the diagnosis okay so of course i'll be giving you tips on the best way to get management for your diagnosis yes yeah, so in plot two you're actually going to rotate through 18 stations but in reality there are only 16 stations where you will be interacting with a simulated patient okay so why are there 18 stations? Because you're going to have two rest stations, okay? So um, some of you will start with a rest station, which honestly might not be the best thing because, I mean, I imagine all that adrenaline and you're just like, damn, I'm just ready. I need to go. And then they're like, chill. You got to wait another eight minutes. Like, bro, please. You know, so, but anyways, that aside. So yes, yeah, so, but overall you have 16 stations, okay? Where you're really going to be interacting with a uh, a simulation a simulator okay and of course the examiner as well will be in the room in majority of the cases the examiner is in the room okay um few times you might get a video consultation or a telephone consultation so it's really important that you also prepare for that so um for plot two of course um by now everybody knows i believe that it's done in manchester so that means that from any part of the world you are whether you're from nigeria from the caribbean from asia anywhere any part of the world you will definitely have to apply for a uk visa usually it's a visitor's visa okay um so you have to apply for a visitor's visa to do your plug too because it's only done in manchester and in manchester there are actually two centers and um, one of the center is what we call the admin square and the other is admin street and to be honest they are not actually far from each other you can literally walk from square to street and street to square okay so the centers are actually close by but what you can do really is especially if you're new to the country um you could take a day so a day before your exam you could just um maybe walk walk to the center just try to find where your center is so that on that day you're not panicking to locate your center okay but even if you're dropped in street do not panic just ask for direction and you will find your way through square i'm saying that because um my last exam, I literally told the taxi, I'm going to three admin square, but then he dropped me at streets. So I just asked somebody and they just um, directed me. It's literally, I think like a two minutes walk or three minutes walk and even, or maybe even less, but I don't remember now anyways, but you get the gist, right? Yeah, so that's that for, you know, the, um, in terms of the venue, okay? Is there a difference between street and square? Well, I don't know. The rumors have it that one is easier than the other, but personally, I would say that 
go with the mindset that whatever center you are is the center that you are destined or designed to pass okay so don't go with the mindset of oh i got a other center oh i got your easier center like no 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 don't do that to yourself okay every center you get you're capable of demonstrating your communication skills and your management skills as far as i know and i'm concerned okay and of course the mind is also very powerful which is why i'm saying that okay so don't go with a defeat mentality like oh my god they gave me this and though i'm not no 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 no, no. every center you can easily pass for sure okay so all the best that is all right so speaking about the plot two what are the type of stations you will encounter this is very very important okay so for example you would definitely get an history taking station meaning that a, a patient might present with let's say chest pain and fever and by the time you take a history you will realize that your patient has a pneumonia and of course you need to be able to manage you need to make a clinical decision is this a pneumonia that i need to admit a patient for or is this a pneumonia that i can treat as an outpatient and how do i communicate this effectively to the patient okay so history taking is one of those that you're going to encounter so counseling stations now definitely they are actually a must and to be honest counseling stations can really be quite tricky but the main thing is practice okay practice 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 so practice and practice with people that really can pick up your communication skills practice with people that can highlight you know um statements that might come off a bit brash you know um so just practice um for counseling stations and of course know the meat of the station ask yourself what are the issues here of course they are study material yes the gmc themselves does not endorse any study material to be honest they only have what they call the plap to blueprint and ethical dilemmas oh my goodness <laughs> yeah so you're going to get ethical dilemmas maybe speaking to a relative maybe it's even a colleague who is drunk your colleague who is a bit slow with handling so or your colleague that just forgot to do something that they are meant to do okay so you're going to get ethical dilemmas your relatives asking you very difficult questions but again the key really here yeah, is practice okay so if you practice it's really not that um difficult and always remember that for ethical dilemmas to be honest this is something that somebody told me just very few days to my exam you're not a magician okay that means that if you really don't know the answer it's okay to just say that okay like let's say a patient ask you a very tough you know difficult question and if you think about it it's not something that you know you can just say at this time i'm not able to you know um give you an answer but how about but what you shouldn't do is don't just say i'm not able to help you like give for the solution or give other ways that you can assist so you you don't get to the station and say well i don't know the answer or i don't really know what to say no you're going to like you learn diplomacy okay yeah so speaking to your colleagues we talked about that already and of course you're going to get a semen station this is your emergency a to e assessment okay so in another video i really talk about what the semen station is in details okay and what the semen station is really not about which is something that i think i made a mistake um initially okay so we're going to talk about the semen station and you know things that essentially you need to pay attention to or you need to look out for okay they are going to test your ability to write information clearly legibly as well so you're going to get a prescription station okay and of course in another video again i'm going to talk about the prescription station what are the tips and tricks essentially to look out for in your prescription um station okay yes and you're going to do a physical examination i know you probably forgot those things <laughs> But the beauty is there are lots of YouTube videos. Honestly, Geeky Medics is like your number one. By the way, I don't advertise for Geeky Medics. But the thing is, I use Geeky Medics a lot, especially preparing for Oscars. So, I don't know. I just tend to talk about them, okay? Physical examination is another thing, meaning that you might need to examine somebody's shoulder. You might need to do an ankle exam for somebody. You might need to do a knee exam. Or you might even need to look at somebody's ears or, you know, just generally do a physical examination. So this is something that you need to know. But again, they're very good videos. Um, some of the club academies as well also have like YouTube videos that you can watch so that you are up to task with what is expected for your physical examination, okay? So the scoring for club two, and this is very important. Now you're going to be scored on three domains, okay? And I'm just put all of them on the screen. The three domains you're going to be assessed on are the data gathering, the management, and the interpersonal skills. And guess what? 
every domain as the same Mac, meaning your data gathering is going to carry four Macs. Your management is going to carry four Macs and your interpersonal skills would also carry four Macs. Now, don't get it twisted. You need to demonstrate competencies in all the three domains, meaning that you cannot go to that exam and all you do is you spend six minutes gathering data. Why are you doing that? Please tell me why. What exactly are you asking? You can't do that, okay? You cannot gather data for six minutes and that's on period, okay? Yes, some stations, very few stations are going to be very long. Like the questions you need to ask, really, they are all important. Okay, but that would be like maybe one station or two maximum on that day. The majority of the stations, you are going to need to demonstrate that you have the competencies for data gathering, meaning don't go more than five minutes. I'm sorry if you feel like I'm shouting, but this is very touching to my heart. And this is very important because I have seen this a lot, like people spending six, seven minutes on data gathering. And I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Please tell me why. Why exactly are you spending six minutes on data gathering in an exam that you have to demonstrate competences in eight minutes? I don't know why. Anyways, but of course, it does come with practice as well. Don't mind me, okay? That was just on a lighter note, but really, it does come with practice, okay? So yes, your data gathering is important, but even more than that is your management. Because think about it. What is data gathering? Data gathering is your Socrates, your Odipara, your Pimaftosa, your ICE. This is something that literally anybody can cram. So what sets every candidate apart is the management. And what is management? Your clinical knowledge. Management is your clinical knowledge. And what is interpersonal skills? Your communication. Your, your interpersonal skills is your ability to communicate with the patient. What is your management? Your knowledge, your clinical knowledge. That is what management is really about. So that means that you need to be able to definitely ask the right questions, okay? And when you're asking the right questions, please ask them in a very logical manner, okay? <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about, okay? But ask your questions in, you know, a very nice logical manner. It really does. It just makes sense that you're really thinking as a doctor, okay? And yes, you have to demonstrate management and your interpersonal skills. And one thing that I can say, which I'm not, I mean, I don't work for GMC, obviously. I just pass for exams. But I would say that one thing I've seen is that if you can get through to management, if you can demonstrate management, communicate that management, you will pass your interpersonal skills as well. As long as you don't say the wrong kind of thing, right? As long as your management is not you centered. In another video, I'll give you tips about management and I'm going to be discussing. Um, definitely, I cannot discuss any case that I got on my exam because you all know that I'm not ready to lose my license that I just got. OK, so, <laughs> but I will be talking about how to deal with management cases. OK, and this is from a, from my own perspective. Anyways, um, it's not really like I work for GMC or anything like that. But, you know, in ways that I can help others, I'm willing to do so. OK. Um, interpersonal skills, very important. We'll also talk about that, you know, what really is interpersonal skills? Again, this is from my own perspective and from reading as well the, the plot to blueprint, okay? So another thing to note is that a lot of the time, I do think that the interpersonal skills score and the management scores are interlinked together. Because for example, there was a station where, um, again, we can't talk about the, the station itself, but there was a station where I also personally knew, I mean, coming out of the exam, I knew that I didn't manage the patient. So obvious, I was trying to be hopeful and everything, but like, humanly speaking, I knew that I wasn't going to pass that station because I'm looking at my task. My task is, okay, talk to the patient and explain the management. But for whatever reason, I couldn't get through to the patient to explain the management. And guess what? Of course, I failed the station because what I'm saying essentially is that your management and interpersonal skills are interlinked together. So if you can get to management, you will likely get your marks as well in interpersonal skills. And of course, that is managing properly with the right clinical knowledge. Okay. Yes. And also the scoring of part two. Some of you have probably done other off skills where really you just need to pass a minimum number of stations 
or they just say okay you need to pass an overall score but for club two well it's not like that the general medical council they have two criteria for you to pass one of them is you need to pass the minimum score and to be honest the minimum score actually varies every day okay in every exam sometimes i mean people post their results on social media so so sometimes you will see a minimum score of 99 sometimes you'll see a minimum score of 103 sometimes you see a minimum score of 105 or 106 107 but i think overall the score really um varies from as little as maybe 94 or 91 and that depends on if they cancel one or two stations okay to go as i think the highest i've ever seen is 106 Okay, um, but maybe if anybody has seen more, you can obviously put that in the comment section so that people are aware of what to expect. Okay, but really, mom's calls are they vary between again 91 to 106. Okay, um, and they vary by each day. So it's one thing to get the minimum number of scores, it's another thing to pass the minimum number of stations. I know so. You're getting 16 stations where you have the real encounter with your simulated patients. So of those 16 stations, to be honest, they just want you to pass only 10. Okay. So, I mean, if you end up passing 12, 13, 15, or even 16, that's a bonus. You know, like, at the end of the day, all you need to do is pass the 10 stations. But of course, on exam day, we never know which 10 stations we're going to pass. So that means that we enter into every room and giving ourselves every chance to fight to pass every station. We fight for every station. Unless you get to the end and you're just like, you know what? I think I have done really, really well. So probably I can let this one go, you know? I mean, <laughs> also... I'll give you tips as well about the exam day on a different video. I'm trying not to make this video too long, honestly. Um, so, so you need to pass a minimum score and you need to pass a 10 station. Meaning that, let's say for example, the minimum score is 102. Now you could get it 115 or even 120 and only pass nine stations. Guess what? Sorry, you didn't pass. And somebody on the other hand gets it 103 and passes 10 or 11 stations. Guess what? Yeah, they pass the exam. So that's it. So hope you get that, okay? So that means that for every station, try to fight for as many marks as you think you can get, okay? So fight for every station, okay? And all the best artists.